Good morning, everyone. I hope you all had a lovely, lovely weekend. Um, I know that we took a little break from live programming last week, but we are back um, for the most part. For those of the people that are on vacation this week. Um, but today I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, but before I get into that, my name is Annalise. I'm an exercise physiologist here at Positive Choice Integrative Wellness Center. And uh, welcome to Functional Strength. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, I want to focus on back health in particular. So we're going to do an entire class of back health exercises. And we're going to start with beginner stuff and we're going to move into more advanced and we're going to hit everything you need to know for a nice healthy back. So if you're having some pain, um, if you're having some discomfort or you feel like your back is not strong, uh, today's workout is for you. But know that you should modify anything that causes pain or anything that you've been advised against doing by your doctor. Um, and yeah, so let's get started. So we're going to stay on the mat today. And um, I have some weights here. They are optional, and I'm going to show you how to utilize the weights to add. Okay? So we're going to work back health, and then we're going to add that strength in. So um, if you have weights, if you have extra things to add, get them now. And come on down on your mat. And we're going to start in all fours. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, big inhale. And exhale. And if you tuck your toes underneath, it helps to take some pressure off the knees if you're sitting here. Exhale. And if you want to do this on a bed, one more. Fill up those lungs. Or on your couch, something that is not getting down on the floor, please make those modifications. All right, so now we're going to come into tabletop. And we're just going to start with gaining some mobility through our spine. So I want you to inhale and come up and round through that back and then exhale and open up. So along our spine, we have a whole musculature that can become tight and painful. And depending on how we hold our body, we can put more pressure on those muscles than we need to. And a lot of times, the pain that we feel for our back isn't structural. It's literally just muscle weakness and muscle tightness. So the whole thing with your back is adding mobility and adding strength. Good. Let's do a few more here. And stay with your breath. Stay with what feels good. And now come on into neutral, and I want you to take your knees out to the side of your mat, so a little bit wider than your hips, and you're going to sit back and walk your hands out. Take some deep breaths here, and feel if you have any tightness. Feel if you have any tightness through your low back, mid back, maybe through your hips. It's all connected. And now we're going to walk our hands to the right side. And I want you to take that left hand and top that right hand. So stretching into that side body. And then walk it back. Let's go to the left side now. And crossing that right hand on the left hand. And coming back through the center. And I want you to come out and then come back in. So again, this is going to add some blood flow to our hips. It's going to open up that back. Good. One more. And sit back. One more back. And throughout class today, let's walk it to the right hand side. If you have any tightness, if you get any fatigue, if you need a break, Child's pose is a great one to come back into. Left hand on that right hand. Opening up through that side body. And then come on back through the center. Come back into tabletop. So move those knees right under the hips. And I want you to find a neutral spine. So a big part of back issues is that we tend to relax our abs. And we overarch our back. And now my back is taking the brunt of my 
weight. So just by pulling my belly button in a little bit, my back does less work and my abs have to do more work. We want that. We want the abs to share the brunt of carrying your torso around all day. So find that nice neutral spine. And then we're gonna start out with bird dog. So take your right leg back and left arm, take it up. I want you to find stability here. And then when and if you're ready, I want you to lift and press that heel away. This pose is not about height, it's about extension. So reach to the ends of the room and pull your shoulders away from your ears. If you found stability, come on down and let's go to the other side. So starting with that foot planted, right arm extends out. Keep your head in a neutral position. And then when and if you're ready, reach that leg up and reach to the ends of the room. Flex that foot and imagine pressing your heel away from you. Finding stability the best you can. And then come on down. Let's go back to that other side. Reach, reach, reach. And we, we're holding this pose for a couple of reasons. The first is we're going for stability, okay? The second is that I want you to cue into your body, switch sides, and I want you to find the position that works for you. Where does your abs turn on? Where are you most stable? And switch. Abs in. You're doing this right, you should feel this through your abs, maybe in through these like oblique muscles. And then smile, because it's Monday, and you're here, and your blood's flowing. And come on down, reach it up. Good, strong body. And remember, if your back starts to get fatigued, come back into that child's pose. Good, one more. Good, and come on back. So give that back a little counter stretch to your drop down. And come on back. Now we're gonna add on to that bird dog. And we're gonna stay on one side and pull in towards our center. So adding stability with the mobility, all the abilities. So extend on out, and now you've got your abs in, but you're gonna you're gonna cap your back. So round it and pull your knee in towards your elbow. I want you to hold it here for a second, and then reach out and pull in. And same thing, it's a reach. It's not a lift. So we're not going for height, we're going for extension. Excellent job, everybody. Let's do five more. Five. Four. Good. Last one, last one. Hold it in nice and tight, hold it, hold it. And release. Good. I need a little shake out on my hands. So know that being on your hands is a strength thing. Um, if you have any, if you have like arthritis or carpal tunnel issues, there are other things going on there. But part of it is just letting them get used to holding you up. All right. So come on back because we got to do that other side. So starting out, finding your stability. Angle your hips parallel to the ground. And when you're ready, bring it both in and we're gonna hold. Find your strongest point. And then big inhale, reach out. And exhale. And inhale. Good. You're halfway. 
Stay there. Nice and strong. Get that extension. This is definitely some strength for your upper body as well. Last one. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold, stabilize. And come on down. Good. Shake it out. Um, grab water and a towel if you want. And we're going to flip over onto our back. I forgot my water and towel off camera. I'll be right back. All right. Are we on our backs? Okay. So, go ahead. And speaking of your backs, so if you have a lot of back issues, okay, the best way is to come down on your side and then roll. Same thing if you are getting up off the floor. Don't try and sit up. Roll to your side and then push yourself up. All right. So we put a lot of tension in our back with those bird dogs and those extensions. So we're gonna start out with single knee pull-ins. And other side. So these are especially good if you're beginning, if you're having any kind of like chronic pain in your back, these single leg pulls are great to do before you get out of bed in the morning. And notice that I'm not extending my opposite leg. I'm keeping both feet, knees bent because the second I extend the opposite one, that puts more pressure on my low back. So stay here until you get stronger. Good, let's do one more. And then if these become easy, then we pull both and then release. And then pull both and release. Good. Now what I want you to think about here is I want you to think about your abs again. So we talked about the importance of engaging the abs when we were in our prone position. But now we're in our supine position and it's the same thing. So before we move on to anything else, I want to talk a little bit about how our back and belly kind of work. So if I naturally arch my back and I have this space underneath here, which I don't have a big arch in my back, so I don't get that, that like beautiful arch that you see in photos, but that beautiful arch doesn't support your back so much. So what I want you to do is I want you to kind of tuck your pelvis. So pull your pelvis towards you a little bit and that presses your low back into the ground. And then actively pull your belly button into your spine, okay? You should feel kind of like a zipper up the middle. That's engaging those abs. And what this does long-term is it will teach you, especially once we do this under movement, it will teach you to use your abs more during your daily activity, okay? More abs, less back strength. That's what we want. So keeping that engaged, I want you to pull your heels as close to you as possible, hip distance, and lift up. Good. So it's all about squeezing those glutes and keeping those abs engaged. If you start to feel this in your back, you may be overextending. So I can get, if I just kind of like go for the movement, I can get a lot of range. But if I'm really squeezing my glutes and I'm pulling my abs in, I can't quite get the range and that's okay because we're going for muscle engagement. Now I know many of you have done this before, and we're gonna do three more. And then I'm gonna show you during our second set how we're gonna add to this. That's what the weights are. So 
come on down. If you have weights, grab them. Now your glutes are big muscles, so if you have heavier weights, I would suggest those. They can take it. I'm gonna do 12s, which is neither here nor there, because we're all different. So if you need to go lighter or heavier, you do it. So we're back in our position. And if you have dumbbells, I would say angle them on your pelvis. That way they'll sit there cradled, and then you just hold the outside. You can also do like a medicine ball, jug of water, um, anything to add weight to your hips. And then we're gonna press our heels into the ground, lift those hips. Squeezing the glutes. If you feel this too much in your hamstrings, you may wanna try moving your heels a little bit closer to your body. And remember, think about those booty muscles, think about those glutes, make them your prime mover, and pull your abs in. Good job. Breathe, relax that upper body. Nicely done, everybody. Now come on and hold, hold. I want you to squeeze those glutes as tight as you can. And then let's lower down nice and slow for four. Here's four, three, two. Up and hold, up and hold. So if you've got weights on, you should really be feeling this. And we're gonna go down nice and slow for four. And three, and two. Again, pick it up. Good. And come on down. Two. Three. You got one more in you. Let's do it. Let's do it. Take it up. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Three. Two. One. Give those a break. We're going to come back to those. But we're also going to get some lighter weight. So I'm going to put those there. If you have lighter weights, go ahead and grab them. If you have no weights, that's okay too. We're going to go overhead for this one. And we're going to utilize that ab strength. So, pull the abs in and start with no weights. And I want you to press your low back into the mat. So you should feel a little bit like you're doing a crunch, but you're not. And the challenge here is that your hands are gonna stay together with those weights, and you're gonna take those weights overhead. Your arms are soft in the elbows, but they're mostly straight. And what your body's gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna arch your back, and that's part of the challenge. So that's why the weights aren't totally necessary, because the point is maintaining that core. So pressing that low back into the mat and not allowing it to let go to add that arch. And if you can only maintain that going a little bit down, then that's where you stop. That means that's where your strength is at, and we work within our own strength levels. Good. So you might feel this through your rib cage, through your upper back. Big deep breaths. Keep maintaining that. Good. Let's do one more. Keep that steadiness. Bring it all the way back. And then lower them on down. I'm going to put them on each side. We're going to go back to those hips. If you want to add the weights, go ahead, but we're going to turn it into a single leg. So you may not want the weights, but I'm going to redo the weights. 
And because we're going to do single leg, I want your feet to be a little bit closer. And we're going to start out in double. So if you feel like you don't have the strength for this yet, then this is not for you and this is what we work up to. So I want you to take your right leg and you're going to extend it up. Flex your foot and you're going to lower down and pull up. And lower down and pull up. So once again, this is booty, probably some hamstring. And then it is also stability through that core. Find your own range of motion. And don't be afraid to modify. Get in a point that feels strong to you and that's where you work. Three, we're almost there. Don't give up now. Two, last one. Good, come on down. Woo. I don't know about you guys, but my standing leg. It needs a little break. All right. Let's go to the other side. So now we're going to take that left leg. So come on up. Grab your strength. Grab your stability. Then extend up. Flex that foot. And come on down. Now we've got another thing working against us here, possibly. If you have a hard time, and I just have like a little hamstring cramp. If you have a hard time with that straight leg, that could be your hamstrings are tight. We're going to work on this though, don't worry. Stay with this, nice and stable. Three, two, last one, last one, good. Lower on down, kick those weights off, put them down by your hips. We're going to go second set of those overheads. If it makes you feel better on your back, you can not cross your legs, but you can bring them up here. But depending on what's going on, that could also make it harder. So pull that belly button into the mat. Take a deep breath and open up overhead. Make sure to get that exhale on the way up. You're doing great. Hopefully you're feeling good. Pull that belly button in. Don't let it go. Recheck in on it. Making sure that we're not reverting to old patterns. Good. You got two more. Nice and strong. And bring it up. Good. Put these down. I'm going to move them behind me. Get water. Stretch out if you need to. Relax through that back. All right. This next one is tabletop with your legs. So, bring your legs up to 90 degrees. Now, recheck in. Belly button towards the spine and make sure that those knees are in line with the hips. If we bring them in here, this is more of a resting position. Make them here and don't relax here. And if you really want to engage, flex your feet so you've got all the right angles. Get it? Right angles. Dirt joke. Totally. So we're going to hold it here. And if you want to add to this, hands behind your head, relax your head, and just hold. And we're going to hold this for about 30 seconds, you guys. This is all about stability. You got this. Big deep breath. Stay with it. I don't know about you all, but I am shaking. Pull that belly button into the ground. You got 10 more seconds. Stay with it. Stay with it. Good. And come on down. Relax, relax. We're going to do that 
for the supine instability, and you know we're going to go into plank to end today. But we have one more thing. So once you get up to about 30 seconds, maybe up to a minute, holding that 90, we can add to that. And our second set, we're going to add to that. So bring them up, head up. Now, keeping the angles the same, you're going to drop one leg and then bring it back. And then drop and bring it back. Good. So that extension is coming from your hips, which makes your abs have to really engage to steady this. This is not a fancy move, but it's a good one. Good job. How many more do we want to do? I don't want to do a whole lot more, I'll tell you that. Good. How about eight more? Eight. Seven. Stay with it. Stay up tall. Use your breath. There's four. And three. You're almost there. You're almost there. Two. And one. Drop it down. Good. Extend those legs. Extend those arms. Give yourself a nice little arch in your back. All right. We've come time. It's plank time. So, roll onto your side. Hand down. Come on up. All right. I don't know about you guys, but I need a little, a little pat dry off. If you're at home with no air conditioning, you're doing like a little kind of like hot functional strength this morning. A little sweating and never hurt anybody, but drink plenty of water. Okay. So we're going into our plank and I'm going to show you all the progressions. I like my towel so I don't slip on my mat. And we're going to do plank and forearm. So, elbows stack right underneath the shoulders. And this might be level one. Okay? My knees are just barely behind my hips. I don't have a lot of weight on my arms. That's okay. Then, option two. You want to feel that same zip up through your core, not letting your back arch. Pull it in. Okay? And option three, toes down, hips up. Take your poison and hold. We're going to go for a 30 second hold here, you guys. Head down, eye gaze on your hands. Keep that spine in alignment. You're almost there. You're almost there. You got a few more seconds. Don't put it at the end. If you've made it this far, you can make it a little longer. Stay with it, stay with it, and drop down. This is a good opportunity to counter stretch. Take a few deep breaths here. Let that back relax. How would you all feel about one more plank? I feel pretty good about one more plank. I think that we should do it, right? We're here, we're set up for it. One more 30 second plank, okay? All right. So, you know all the options. Pick your option, stack it up. I'm gonna go full and 30 seconds starts now. Pull those shoulder blades towards your spine. Engaging all the way through your body. Quads, glutes, calves, everything is going. And shoulders are away from your ears. And remember, if today only takes you halfway, that's okay. You're almost there, you guys. You got five seconds. Three, two, one. See? 
something feels challenging and you dislike it, it means you gotta do it because you're gonna benefit from it. All right, big deep breath, kick it in. Exhale, since we're here, grab those hands behind. So now we've gone through all the strength parts. Now we're gonna deal with the other half of what usually causes those issues, with it, which is tightness, okay? So, since we're here, we're gonna start on our hands and knees. And just to kind of give you an idea of where we're going with this, when we look at our spine, it attaches to our pelvis, okay? And everything on us is attached. So a problem somewhere can cause a problem anywhere else. But when we're looking at back health, we're looking specifically at a few areas. And I like to look at the areas that pull our pelvis out of alignment, okay? So if my hip flexors are tight, they're gonna pull my pelvis forward, causing this kind of like position. And when my pelvis is forward, I've got a lot of weight stacked on my back, and my abs are relaxed. So if those are pulling on that, that's going to cause back issues. If your glutes are tight, any of these hip muscles are tight, they pull on your pelvis, putting stress on your back. Your hamstrings are tight, they pull on your knees, they pull on your pelvis, they pull on your upper part of your pelvis, all causing extra strain on the back. So let's dig in and let's see if any of these are particularly tight for you. So we'll start out in a runner's lunge. And I have kind of sensitive knees. They don't really like to have pressure on them too long. So you can fold up and put under your knee here. And then I want you to take that opposite leg and step way forward. And then before I even go into that, push your hips so that they are going straight forward, okay? It's really easy if I open up and kind of like, not gonna get it. So square those hips up and then lean forward. And adjust your knee as it feels comfortable and press into that hip flexor. And if you need, you can use something like your water bottle if you can't quite come down, okay? Good, and really square up those hips. You should be feeling that deep stretch through your hip flexor here. Deep breaths, really digging into here. And then slowly press yourself out of this and straighten out your front leg, flexing that foot, not sitting back, okay? I'm still actively engaged, and I pull that front toe towards the ceiling, getting a deep stretch through my hamstring. And then easing on out, and let's switch sides. Stepping forward, way forward. Square yourself up, pressing that left hip, or whichever hip you have of the back leg, press that hip forward. And then ease in to wherever feels comfortable for you. So for me, being down like this, it's a little bit less of a stretch, and being up is a little bit more of a stretch. I'm getting more of that complete side body. And don't worry, we're gonna stretch again on both sides. Stretching can be done multiple times. And what you'll notice is usually the second time you get into a stretch, it's gonna be a little bit better. And now shift your weight back, straightening out that front leg. Toe goes up. And since we've been 
working, we're warm, our blood is towards the muscles, our muscles are all warm and pliable. Now is the time that you're gonna get the best stretch, the best bang for your buck. And what I want is I want you guys to leave today's workout feeling better than when you came in. Feeling looser. Good, and ease on out. So just like I said, let's go back in that original leg. Big step forward. Now I'm gonna advance it a little bit this time. So if you can, come on up. Notice my knee is stacked right over my ankle. And I want you to reach it up and reach up to the ceiling. And then if you want a little bit more, lean away. So really opening up through that side body, hip flexors, abs, and press those hips forward. Take some deep breaths here. Allow yourself to relax into the stretch, gaining an inch or two. Use your breath to help relax those muscles. And come on up. Sit back. Sit back, digging into that hamstring a little bit, and then let's switch sides. Don't worry, we're going to get those hamstrings a little bit more specifically here in a minute. So, stepping big forward, readjust for that knee, and then come on up, arm up, reach away from that back leg, and just allow yourself deep breaths. And what you'll notice is that with each breath and relaxation, you might sink a little bit more into this. Good. And bring that arm on down. Sit back. Sit back. Ready, bring 
bring those hands on up underneath your shoulders. Bring yourself up. Now instead of switching, we're gonna, I'm just gonna bring in my back leg. And I just wanna get some twists here really quick. Good. Just feeling out if you have any tight spots. Let's go to the other side. Bring up nice and tall and twist. Good. And then come on back. I want you to grab a strap or a belt or your hand towel for the hamstrings. The best way to protect your back and stretch your hamstring is to be on the ground. Loop that strap around the top of your foot, flex that foot, and relax it until that leg can go straight. Not quite locked out, but straight. And then slowly pull it in. Keeping that opposite leg bent to keep that back pressed against the floor. And same thing here. So deep breath into that hamstring. See if you can allow that hamstring to let go and stretch. Big, big, deep breaths. And then from here, let it go a little bit, and then let it fall across your body. So you might feel a stretch through your IT band, runs along the side, but because we're focusing on our back, I want you to bend that leg, get rid of that IT band stretch, and let that knee fall across your body, getting a big twist through the spine, letting all of that tension go. When you're ready, pull yourself on back through the middle, and we're gonna switch feet. Okay, right, so start out low, lower than you think. Let that leg go straight with a soft knee. Pull that toe in towards you. So getting a nice straight long line on the back of your leg. I got a little cramp going there. And then slowly pull in. Always adjusting for yourself, where you feel best. If you find your muscle starts to shake, let it go a little. Let it go a little. You don't want your muscles spasming, shaking, it's a little bit too much load. Stretching should feel good, it should feel like a relaxation. Imagine pulling those muscles apart like putty. And then now let's let that knee bend a little bit. Drop it over across your body, bending that knee, and then extending that opposite arm out. Letting gravity allow that spine to twist. Good job. When you're ready, Bring those knees in together, back to center, drop them off to the other side, roll to your side, hands down, help yourself up, have a seat nice and tall. Good job today, you guys. I hope that your back feels wonderful. Maybe a little bit worked. Big exhale, blow it all out. Thank you so much for joining me today. Remember to like and share, because the more people that watch, the more people get the benefit of this and the bigger our community comes. So have a great Monday, you guys, and uh, tune in the rest of the week.